Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. For all things Vespa, whether you're looking for spare parts such as a replacement fuel pump or a replacement fuel level sender for any model Vespa, we got you covered on ScooterWest.com. So today I'm going to show you how to change out these parts. And I'll just start with uh, what this video is all about. It's going to be an advanced video. This is for somebody who has something like a lift because you practically drop the motor to change out the fuel pump or the fuel level sender. Say your fuel gauge doesn't work, it's typically this fuel level sender. You can hear it float in there. Uh, sometimes they fail mechanically or electrically. Um, I'm not gonna go into the part numbers of these. You can find details on scooterwest.com on the specific part numbers for the replacement OEM fuel pump. So an OEM fuel pump, this is a used one. Um, but it would look like this, and there's many different configurations and variations of them uh, depending on the year and model. And the fuel pumps are specific to the fuel injected scooters. Uh, very, very reliable fuel pumps for the most part. There is a small range of Vespa scooters made between 2009 and 2011 that do have a recall on the pump. You can certainly call your local dealer and give them the VIN number and see if there's a recall on the pump, if there truly is a problem with it. Um, if it's not in the recall, well then your pump's just failed because it's old or it sat too long and jammed up the, the pump. Uh, quick, quick little overview of the anatomy of the uh, a fuel pump or the complete pump assembly. This is the filter sock. This is the electric pump itself. So it's an electric motor that's submerged in the, the, into the tank. The sock kind of catches the, the big particles of fuel stuff. And then there's a polybutylene uh, hose, I think that's made out, or nylon or whatever it's made of. And this is the fuel filter. It's actually designed to last the life of the scooter. It is available as a spare part, but very, very difficult to change because working with this fuel line is very, very difficult. Uh, it's not technically designed to be reused. And the last component of the fuel pump is the fuel pressure regulator. Um, on the top of the fuel pump, got electrical connection. Sometimes they have a fuel gauge in integral with the fuel pump hanger, as this is called. Um, the earlier models have a supply and a return. So depending on the model, this would be your supply. This is your return. So there's a two hose mo uh, version of it. All the newer Vespas and Piaggios just have a single dead-headed single line uh, system, uh, but similar components inside the fuel pump. If you're really cheap and don't want to buy this really expensive OEM fuel pump, it is possible just to buy the pump, the sock, and the filter and the hose. But again, they are very, very difficult to work with. They do come apart in some, some ways. There's like a little rivet that holds the pump. But it is possible to change them. We've sold pumps. We do have aftermarket pumps available um, for the Vespas and stuff uh, and some of the Piaggio products. As for the fuel level sender, I'm not gonna break this open, but kind of here, there's a, a rheostat in there, a variable resistance may have on ceramic and it's got a float. Sometimes these floats either get stuck, so the fuel level never changes. Um, sometimes part of it will break away from vibration like I've, on my own scooter in Mexico, it's like been broken forever because all the off-roading I've done with it. Um, so it mechanically is no longer working, just indicates either no fuel or if you have a digital uh, fuel level, it may be flashing or show two bars flashing, kind of indicating you got a fault with your fuel level sender. Uh, these are used on both carbureted Vespas. So a GT200 would have this part, it just doesn't have electric fuel pump but unfortunately you dropped the fuel tank, so this video would be useful to you. So let's get to the nitty gritty and dirty of changing the fuel pump. And I'm gonna go quick, because this is for the professional mechanic, home mechanic that is uh, pretty accustomed to working on uh, scooters. So first of all, you'll need to have the scooter in a lift or some type of means to clamp the front tire. Uh, you could do it with something that is uh, rudimentary as wood, or have something even hold the bike or some way to support the front. And then you're gonna to need to lift the center of the frame, support it when you partly drop the motor. 
and I typically use a scissor jack for a specific for a motorcycle. Uh, you could use an automotive uh, little little jack will do the trick just as well, but this works pretty good if you want to invest in something like this if you don't. So first of all, we got to gain access to the three fasteners that hold the fuel tank and partly drop the motor. So uh, we're going to drop the shocks. I'm going to remove this surround. You could certainly remove the muffler and air box as well and disconnect the shocks from the bottom. But typically for a fuel tank, you want the shocks all the way out of the way. So I'll disconnect them from the top. So this is a five millimeter Allen. Later models, you have a T30 Torx. I'll, I'll warn you, this scooter is pretty crusty. This thing's got a ton of miles on it. It's got like well over 40,000 miles on it. Uh, no problem with the fuel pump. It's just I'm just using it as my um, guinea pig to show how to pull the fuel, fuel tank out. And so that all lifts out. Recommend putting the fuel cap back in um, just for right now. Always wanted to kind of do this with a low tank if possible. Um, you have this fuel line or this, this vapor line going to the top filler neck. A um, couple ways to get that off. You can use diagonal pliers and either cut that hose clamp off, but I found sometimes you could just slip it off. You don't want to break. I'll, I'll tell you one thing about these tanks. They're all plastic, which is a great thing because they don't corrode like metal tanks. But if you carefully slide that off, that's smooth. There's no barbs on it, so it usually comes right off, no problem. And then you could push it back on without issues. So the front supported, the scooter's not on the center stand. Uh, 13 millimeter, you could hold this with a, a flat or a little wrench. I'll just do it with an impact, make it nice and easy, 13 millimeters. Kind of cheat with the electric impact. So these are the upper shock mounts of a Vespa GTS. If you're doing this job on like a Primavera, or LX, uh, um, they only have a single shock on them, but everything's pretty similar. Doesn't matter what Vespa it is. If you're doing the fuel, fuel level sender on an old ET2, uh, pretty much the tanks are all in the same arrangement. It's like the tank kind of surrounds and is built into the bodywork, and it's a plastic molded tank. So now at this point, the scooter kind of lifts, you know, you know and uh, we're getting pretty close at that point. So. Uh, next, I'm going to remove the side skirts cause, and the taillight because that's what we need to do to get access uh, to some of the fasteners for the tank. So I'll get these skirts out of the way. Uh, typically always a screw Phillips or a Torx screw on the front part. Now I'll warn you, this scooter is crusty. I can't believe I didn't pressure wash it before I started doing this job. I'm going to be filthy by the time I'm done with this job. Typically, um, something like this, I'd, you'd want to pressure wash it before you um, tackle this job, the, you know, the tank just gets really filthy up in the frame from all the tire, tire dust. And then behind here is typically a nut, but this scooter has been missing for a while. So you normally have a nut, this thing's all busted out. What you expect for an old crusty uh, scooter like this. And now you can see part of the fuel tank and you're like, well, how is this gonna come down when you got the motor in the way? Um, well, we're getting there. So on the rear, we're going to go ahead and remove the tail light. Like why you got to remove a tail light for a, a fuel tank change? Well, uh, there's a hidden fastener under here. That's just specific to holding the fuel tank. Eight millimeter, uh, driver. That thing's got a little rust on it. It's got a flat washer and a split washer. And before you leave the rear, take off the pair of tail lights or turn sails, excuse me. Uh, reason being is the fuel tank will just hit these signals. So you could just hang them, you know, pop them out, hang them from the wires, and that's all you need to do. So a couple things you wanna to do to prepare the motor for dropping or partly dropping out. Um, usually the throttle cables, they need to be out, out of these clips. They'll have a clip. Just, it could still be connected to the throttle body, no problem there, or the carburetor. Um, on this model, I want to pull the spark plug cap off. Yeah, that spark plug cap is crusty. Um, 
And on this fuel tank, I don't know if you could see it, this is an early model with the double hoses that I was speaking of versus the later models where they have a single hose. But they do have a clamp that holds the pair of hose, uh, hoses to the fuel tank. Uh, you do wanna take that clamp off. And I'll warn you, I've seen a lot of people do this job and they completely blow it on the routing of the fuel lines. It's very, very critical that you get the routing of the fuel lines correct when you do a job like this. So you remove that clamp that holds the pair of hoses to the fuel tank and you don't lose track of the little clamp. They have a different style clamp for the single hose variations. And if you're just watching this video and you say, oh, I got an MP3 500 or BB 350, um, those are some of those, like the BV350, you could take some of the body work off and get access to the fuel, fuel pump without dropping the tank. MP3, forget it. Pull all the body work. You're gonna have to drop the fuel tank from the bottom. It's a very difficult, time-consuming job. Not necessarily difficult, just time-consuming. And I'm sorry, I'm not gonna make a video on that because not that many people have those that need fuel pumps. Um, two more screws that hold the fuel tank. This one's a longer one, so keep, tr keep track of the screws. And there's a shorter one right up here. And you saw the whole tank drop, so this is the same, same length as the, the one on the rear. Uh, probably don't wanna have the cap on, even though I just keep it, don't wanna have sparks or anything. So the fuel, fuel tank's loose at this point. Uh, now we have our clamp and we'll go ahead our, our, our scissor jack, we're gonna lift the frame and kind of guide the shocks. Um, it is a little bit easier if the air box and the muffler are out of the way, but I'm gonna leave them in place. Uh, we'll be able to lift the frame high enough to separate it, but leave the motor behind, you know, on the ground and we'll get enough clearance where we can pull the tank out, disconnect the fuel lines. So in order to make the job a little easier before you jack, uh, the frame all the way up, I'd recommend loosening all three fasteners on the air box. So sometimes in the, this frontmost fastener, it's got a captive, it doesn't have a captive nut, there's just a loose nut that you gotta hold. And then the other two go into uh, clips that are in the rear fender. So at this point, go ahead. You're gonna have to guide this shock sometimes, especially on the And you can see how high the motor is. Just keep an eye on all your hoses, electrical connections, make sure nothing's stretched too tight. And you pretty much need about this high in order to drop the tank. So at this point, we can carefully drop the tank down. Um, sometimes it will bind up. Of course, the more you drop the motor, the easier this goes. Push the filler neck right all the way through. Um, and at this point, I could see most of the top of the fuel pump. And sometimes you gotta go just a little bit higher than you think. Um, but at this point, I see the hoses, the electrical connections, even the fuel level sender, which is up on this upper section of the fuel tank. But I wanna get this tank all the way out just to show everybody how, it, how you can change out the fuel pump. Uh, make sure this is pretty clean up here. Um, the lines kind of, uh, they are molded so they terminate in the exact same spots there. And I highly recommend cleaning this before you just, you know, remove those fuel lines. So I'm going to take the first the fuel level sender and I'll show you there's a tab on the top of the connector. Sometimes you'll need a little screwdriver to get it loosened up. Makes a little click. And there you go. So I'm pushing on this little tab to release the connection. Uh, sometimes there's corrosion on this connection. That's maybe why your fuel level sender is not working. And the other connection is to the fuel pump. 
and it's got a tab on the top and you want to lift the tab versus press the tab. So carefully lift the tab and push the, the connector towards the frame. So I'm lifting on this tab right here to release the connection. So those are the two electrical connections. Um, you just have the remaining um, hoses that go to the fuel injector. And I'd recommend cleaning the top of this as you know, best you can. Some type of solvent so that you can use some air because if you get dirt in those lines, it could clog the very fine cavity that's on your um, injector. So pretty much all these older fuel pumps have this style of clamp that holds the, uh, the fuel line. So the fuel line's stuck in there, but it rotates. And I'm rotating the fuel pump, the fuel line. So the way you want to do this is I'm pushing down the fuel line and then that ring that's around the fuel line, you want to push it down and then start lifting the fuel line. And you do not want to force anything. I'm going to try to do this with the camera in a way and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do it with two, two fingers. I'm going to push this ring down. I'm going to push the line down and then lift the line. So once I get both of them pushed down, you should be able to, uh, it will release the tension on the line and you'll be able to pull the line out. And I'll warn you, there may be some fuel pressure if your fuel pump is working, that may spray back at you. So um, the inner one's gonna be your gray one, kind of keep track of how they go. You don't wanna cross them up if you have this older style two line system and do the same here. So pretty much, I know my hands are in the way, I'm pushing both the line down and the ring that's around the fuel pump down and then pull the line out. And I recommend leaving these lines up high and a little bit of gas leaks out. Now we're able to pull the fuel tank all the way out. So in order to pull the fuel tank out, you pull it towards the back of the scooter and then you can pull it directly out. So in order to pull the fuel level sender out, I recommend having either a piece of flat iron or you know, some type of thin piece of steel or this wrench. Um, it's typically what you wanna do is get it in a slot and rest it up against this connector and we're gonna turn it counterclockwise and just a bayonet fitting and then it disconnects. And it, it's got a little hole in the bottom that allows it to leak the fuel back. There's a gasket right here. Um, and to put it back in place, it's pretty much just flip this around and make sure it goes all the way to where it stops. And this is almost um, horizontal or vertical with the top of the tank. So removing the fuel pump, it's a little more difficult. They got this ring. Uh, you can use a strap wrench, even a big pipe wrench. You just don't want to damage. This is a plastic nut. I have this oil filter tool that works very good for this job. So go ahead and remove this ring here. And that's the orientation. You can install it in different directions, but then you lift it out. And it's just, of course, don't want to have the fuel tank too high. And you got to kind of walk the, the pump out. So this, this pump is likely original. Uh, no issues with it. So I'm going to put it back in. Like I said, they're they're usually pretty robust. Uh, not too many issues. There was a recall and I kind of outlined uh, those years. You can check the VIN on it. Um, but nothing wrong here. Just you got to be careful when you reinstall it that you do not uh, break that flexible line. So you got to tuck that flexible line in there. It's obviously a little harder with a brand new pump. Make sure the gasket's all in place. The new fuel pump doesn't come with that gasket. They generally are in really good shape and hold up quite a long time, but may not be a bad idea if you have an older one of these scooters to replace that gasket. And then just go ahead and spin the nut back on. Of course, we'll orient the, the fuel pump before we tighten this all the way down. You gotta feel where the thread starts. Sometimes you go backwards with it and then you'll feel the, the thread start. There we go. You don't wanna cross thread this big plastic nut. Make sure that's about there. Make sure it's tight. Make sure the gasket wasn't pinched. Worst thing is you put this all together and it leaks from when you fill up the tank because uh, you won't see a leak unless you have a higher fuel level. Both the sender, I've seen leaks from the sender. 
leaks from the gasket at the top of the fuel pump. So how do you know if you need a fuel pump? And a lot of people just want to buy a fuel pump for the sake of thinking they need a fuel pump. Um, you really need a fuel pressure gauge that's specific for uh, motorsports and fuel injected vehicles. The automotive ones don't always have all the right fittings for these Vespas, but sometimes they do. Uh, we have some specific specialized tools here at the shop with uh, the same fittings as the, the fuel hoses. And you pretty much put the fuel pressure gauge in, in between the hoses. The normal pressure pretty much for nearly all the Piaggio and Vespa scooters, 2.5 bar, about 36 PSI, and it's about. Um, and when you shut the scooter off, it should bleed down to zero very slowly. If it drops to zero very quickly, there's a problem. You probably got a leak in the pressure regulator or a leak in the little line or a split in the filter internally. Um, and also, if you have a problem at high speed, you may want to monitor the fuel pressure when you're operating the scooter and it needs to stay a very constant 2.5 bar. Uh, the fuel pressure is referenced to atmospheric pressure. Sometimes they reference to the intake manifold pressure, but not, not the case with most um, or all these Vespas and Piaggio scooters. Uh, definitely it takes a few tools to diagnose uh, these fuel pumps. Sometimes I'll check the current draw, see what the pump's drawing. Um, Common issues with them, the scooter's been sitting with fuel in it for two, three years. Scooter doesn't start, maybe a clogged injector, but if the fuel pumps, if you don't hear that little whirl, you probably got a stuck fuel pump because the oil gas has gummed up the fuel pump. So there's a perfect example why you need to change one out. Uh, fuel gauge, I talked about the different issues with the fuel gauge and why you'd come in here and replace that. So let's get this tank back into the scooter. I'm just gonna partly install it and then you could take over on the rest of it, but the getting the screws in place is sometimes pretty difficult. So with the frame jacked up and the motor most of the way dropped out, we could just go ahead and pop the fuel tank back in there. It's not always that easy. Sometimes you gotta fight it, um, manipulate things. And before we go too far, we'll start by reconnecting our electrical connections. I'm gonna make sure all these electrical connections make a snap when they, uh, they, they're reconnected. So you don't want those coming loose when you're, you hit a bump down the road. Um, and we'll also get the fuel level sender. Like I said, some of the Piaggio models, they, they have different types of fuel level senders or they're built into the fuel pump themselves. So there are a lot of different variations based on the year and, and model even. The GTS, there's several different fuel pumps. Uh, now we got the pair of lines. Uh, the one that's towards the rear. Make sure everything's clean. And very critical that you snap these in. If they're not all the way snapped in and the line pops off while you're operating, the gas goes on the muffler and you're likely gonna burn the scooter down if it's too hot. Um, plus the scooter stalls out. Pull the line a couple times, make sure it's locked in. And if you're doing this on a much newer scooter, they have much more sophisticated uh, fuel line locks that are uh, sometimes require a little metal clip to be removed. Again, pull on the fuel line, make sure it's in there. If there's any problem with any of these fuel line components, like the fuel lines, anything questionable about them, um, probably want to replace them. They're not really designed to be serviced. Um, but next, we're going to carefully get the fuel tank up in here, there's a mounting point here and it has a Tinnerman clip on it and it lines up with this hole. Uh, the fuel neck is probably the, the first thing you wanna to kind of get through along with this front part of the tank. So it takes a little bit of manipulation to get the tank into place. Sometimes the shock is in the way, you gotta move it around. There we go, we're getting pretty close. Push it up. And I typically like to take the longest screw. It's the hardest one to kind of find the position. So we're gonna lift the tank. And I don't recommend tightening these all the way. You gotta sometimes move the tank all around until you can get them all to line up and start the thread in. So make sure they definitely start before you um, tighten them. And then you got the, the front most fastener here. This one you can see fortunately. 
And you could even use a little Phillips screwdriver to kind of move the clip around if you're having difficulty. Get them all started. Kind of make sure the tank's in the right spot. I always start by tightening the center. Center one, move to this one. And the last fastener at the tail light. And we'll go ahead and reconnect the, the evaporative emissions line. You don't want to forget there's the clamp that retains the pair of hoses. And at this point, we can carefully start to drop the motor um, or the frame back down. Uh, the key is getting the shock absorbers uh, lined up for the and the pair of shocks will just drop right into place. So at this point, you put everything back together. Make sure you tighten um, the nut that holds that, the fuel line in place. Make sure you pop your spark plug cap back on. Um, any of the, the hoses, make sure nothing was pulled too much. And before you go too far, it'd be a good idea just to start the scooter, see how, it, how it's going. And of course, tail light, any of the body work that you took off. And at this point, we could see if the scooter starts. Let's see if I messed anything up. I don't think so. I heard the fuel pump uh, whirl up. It may take a little bit of starting to start the first time. Sometimes you want to cycle the key a few times and allow the pump to prime so it'll start. Starts right up, no issues. And I have a fuel gauge that's uh, working as well. So thanks again for watching. I hope that helped you out. Whether you're just a pro mechanic and looking for tips and somehow you stumble across the end and just scan through this video, uh, I respect you. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If this is way beyond what you'd ever do, maybe you learned something and how the fuel tank's uh, configured on a Vespa and what a fuel fuel pump and the fuel level sender look like on a modern Vespa. Thanks again for watching. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Consider supporting this channel by purchasing products for your Vespa scooter, whether it's spare parts or accessories on ScooterWest.com. Thanks again. See you next time.